Hey, Whimsical Game Musical Teachers, and welcome to today's video where we are going to be talking all about my favorite movement activity for the older grade levels in elementary music, grades three through five. If you didn't see last month's video, we actually already did one for the younger grades for grades K through two, so I will link to that above this video and underneath this video so that if you are interested in that, then you can gladly catch that one and then check in with this one. Or you can just watch this one if this is the one that you need more help with. I know this is the one that I always struggle with. And so I have had at least two to three activities for each grade level. I had a lot more with K through two, but you know, it is what it is. Um, so that's what we're going to share today. And then I have a couple that could be used for all of them. So if you're interested in that, then please stay tuned for the rest of this video. If you're new around here, my name's Rainey and I teach elementary music and middle school musical theater in uh, Central Florida, my eighth year teaching. And I made this channel to help other music teachers instill a love and appreciation of music into the hearts of every child and so how we do that is through lesson ideas tips tricks strategies all the things so please make sure to like and subscribe to this channel so that you can get new content every monday and it really does help my channel grow and i appreciate each and every one of you for being here on this journey with me so like i mentioned in today's video we are just going to share two to three activities for grades three grades four and grades five movement activities that you can use in your classroom because movement is always really important especially even with the older kids they need to be moving they need to get their brain stimulated throughout the day and so you need to make sure that you are providing some area for them to get the sillies out as we all like to call it so let's just dive right in starting with third grade all right I'm going to try not to spend way too much time on this video because this is the seventh video and last video that I'm filming for today and I'm tired of talking and I'm tired of hearing myself and I want to be doing something else. <laughs> so that's where we're at. Okay, let's get started. Now, some of these you could do in any grade level. I'm just putting them with a specific grade level, but do them for whichever one works for you. And for the first one for third grade is Tidy-O, which if you don't know that song, it goes like this. Pass one window, Tidy-O. Pass two windows, Tidy-O. Pass three windows, Tidy-O. Jingle at the window, Tidy-O. Tidy-O, Tidy-O. Jingle at the window, Tidy-O. Tidy-O, Tidy-O. Jingle at the window, Tidy-O. And so that is just a simple, fun folk game that you can do with your students. And so basically, I will find some video of a class doing this for you to explain it better than I will. But they're in a circle, they're in two circles. So like one circle and then another circle and they're facing their partner on the outside. And on past one window, they move a partner over and do tidy yo, past two windows, tidy yo, past three windows, tidy yo. And then they stay with that partner and they do jingle at the window, tidy yo. And they stay with that partner for the rest of the time. Tidy yo, tidy yo, jingle at the window, tidy yo, tidy yo, tidy yo, jingle at the window, tidy yo. And I've learned a couple of different variations where you could even have them change their place in the circle, but I don't do that because that's too complicated for these babies. So I just stick to outside circle is outside circle, inside circle is inside circle. And they move around like that and they have a new partner and I tell them they're just going to have to deal with it. They're going to have a new partner. But I use this song to introduce 16th notes. I use Ticka Ticka notation, but you could use Takadimi, um, Tiri Tiri, whatever you use in your classroom. But I like to use uh, this for 16th notes. And so I use this to present it and because Jingle Out the Window is the 16th part of it all. And we have a lot of fun with this and it's a fun folk dance and they think it's just a good time. Then the next one I have is my favorite mixer. I use it every year at the beginning of the year with all with three through five as a whole, but I'm introducing it in third grade. And that is Sasha. And I learned it from the New England Dance Masters. And so I will link to anything that I use or talk about in this video, I will link to underneath here. And so this is from the New England Dance Masters. And basically they have a partner, they're scattered throughout the room with their partners, they wag their finger at their partner and they say Sasha, Sasha, Raz, va, tre, which is how to count three in Russian because it is a Russian folk dance. And then they clap right, 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 left, 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 both, 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 knees, 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 right, 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 left, 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 both, 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 knees, knees, knees. And then they elbow circle with their partner on da, 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 hey, da, 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 hey. And then they wave goodbye to their partner. They move all around the room. I tell them that during this part, they have to spend the whole time weaving throughout the space and they can't just go to a partner two seconds in. They're not allowed to find a partner until I say five, four, three, two, one, and, and then they do Sasha again. So that they're not just picking someone right away and they might end up having to go with someone else that they weren't expecting to go with. And then if they can't find anybody, they raise their hand really quickly. They run to each other and they normally resolve it on their own. They get about five or six partners with this song. 
you can listen to the song on YouTube. More and better instructions than I will probably be on YouTube, but also in the new England Dance Masters video. So be sure to check that out. This one is always a hit with my students. Then I have one that is more for Halloween time, but you know what? It is so fun and my kids love it. And that is Skin and Bones. So if you don't know that song, it basically is about an old woman who is skin and bones. It goes like this. There was an old woman all skin and bones. Ooh, she lived down by the old graveyard. Ooh, one night she thought she'd take a walk. Ooh, she saw the bones a lying around. Ooh, she opened the closet to get a broom. Ooh, she opened the door and boo! And then they jump out and scare each other. So what I do is I have half the kids on barred instruments and they're just playing the so we learn that on the bard instrument and then half of them are in the graveyard and then they get to wake up on the and then they have to fall back asleep and one person is a little old woman and she gets to walk all through the graveyard and then at the end there's one of them that is hiding somewhere throughout the room and we tell them the general area of where this person is going to be at the end so if they walk that way when it says she opened the door to closet to get a broom and then when she opened the door and the kid gets to jump out at them and scare them and it's a fun time and I turn the lights off for this and we have a lot of fun with this and I haven't gotten to do this in two years because I teach at a private Christian school now and we don't celebrate Halloween and I'm very sad. But my kids loved this when I did it at my old school. But then we switch after all the graveyard kids have had a turn to either be the little old lady or the, uh, the person that jumps out at them. We switch and then the graveyard people become the instrument players. The instrument players become the graveyard players and that is how that goes. But I only allow them to be either the old woman or the person that jumps out. We don't have time to do both and I don't even have time to do everybody on the same day. But that is always a fun one that I utilize in my classroom and I introduce it in third grade. But you better believe in fourth and fifth grade they be asking for it still. All right, let's move on to fourth grade activities that I have. And in fourth grade, I use this song also for 16th notes, but I teach it in fourth grade because it introduces the skater's hold. And that's a little bit of a complicated circle activity movement for my babies. And this one is called Jolly Miller. And the song, that, uh, the way version I learned, because there are a couple different versions, goes like this. There was a jolly miller and he lived by himself. As the wheel went round, he made his pop. With one end in the pocket and the other in the bag. As the wheel went round, he made his crap. And so basically what happens is all the students have a partner and one partner's on the outside of the circle and one's on the inside and they turn and grab like this. And I basically introduce shake your left hand and then, or no, it's shake your right hand and then put your left hand under to shake. And that's how they hold their partner's hand. So they're in a skater's hold walking side by side with their partner. On, and the wheel went round, he made his grab. The outside person, let's go, and moves forward one place to grab skater's hold with the next person. And so the person that's in the middle, there's one person in the middle, on the word made his grab, he tries to race to one of the people that is switching partners at that moment. It's actually the inside people that rotate. Otherwise, he'd never get to them. So it's the inside people that move. But the person that's in the middle tries to race to steal the spot of one of the people that went too slow switching partners. And if they are successful, then that person is the next person in the middle. And if they're not successful after like three tries, I just make someone switch because I'm not going to make someone stay in the middle the whole time. Even if they want to be in the middle the whole time, I'm not doing it that way. And so this is a super fun one that my kids love to do. We have a lot of fun with it. I spend a lot of time teaching the song first because it's a lot of words really quickly all at once. And it's a great song to use for 16th notes in your music classroom. Then we have one that I use for tea ticka and ticka tea and that is Ida Red. This is a fun Valentine's Day activity. I did mention this in my Valentine's Day uh, video but I figured I'd mention it here as well because I still love this activity and my fourth and fifth graders really love this one. And that one goes like this. Down the road and across the street can't get a letter but once a week Ida Red, Ida Blue I got stuck on Ida too. And so basically what I do whoever is it is the main mailman and they get to walk around the circle with two envelopes in their hands and they stop on I got stuck on Ida too and whoever they're stuck they stop right in between the two of they open up an envelope for each kid and the one kid grabs from the Ida red one and one kid grabs from the Ida blue one and there are different locomotor motions so one might say crawl one might say gallop and so well one kid closer to this side has to gallop their way around the circle back to the mailman and the one on this side has to crawl their way around back to the mailman and whoever taps their hand first wins and gets to be the mailman for the next round and no it's not always fair because sometimes one person gets march and one person gets run and it's just unfortunate but it is what it is you don't know what's going to come out of the envelope and so it's a way to practice locomotor movements also tea ticket and ticket tea and they get a turn to be the mailman and then also the people that split 
And if they end up going between two people that have already had a turn and there are people that haven't, I just tell them to keep going until we get to at least one person that hasn't had a turn to do anything yet. And then that is always a fun one to do in my classroom as well. The last one is like a very popular folk song. I think it's in New England Dance Masters. It's also on YouTube. It's everywhere. It's in Game Plan. It's all the places. And that's Alabama Gal. If you haven't heard of that one, it goes like this. Come through in a hurry. Come through in a hurry. Come through in a hurry. Alabama Gal. And then it has a lot of other verses like, I don't know how, how. And then... I can't remember all of them right now because it's literally been a while since I've done it, but you can look up the song. I'll post a link to it somewhere underneath here. This is just a simple folk dance that involves all the things. They do -si do with their partner. They cast away with their partner. They make a bridge with their partner. They come through with their partner. All of the things. This is like one of the most traditional folk dances of them all. If you haven't done this one, I highly recommend doing so. It is always a ball of a time. And as I mentioned prior, I will definitely link a video underneath here in case you want to see this song in action because it's always a hit. Then we're moving on to fifth grade and I have two specific lessons for fifth grade. I cannot remember what musical concept I teach this for. I believe it is for Solfege, but I use it in fifth grade and I will put a little like title under here if I remember what I use it for. And it's called Our Old Sow. And the song goes like this. Our old sow is getting very fat. Kairakimo Kaime, six foot four across the back. Kairakimo Kaime. And I can't remember where I learned this. I think I learned this at a music educators conference forever ago. But how the game works is, so the kids are in a grid. So like there's kit, like they're vertical lines, but they're also horizontal lines. And there is one student on the outside that has a gong in their hand. And then there is one, there's three people that are not in the grid. One person is in charge of controlling the gates and when they turn, and I'll explain that in a minute. And then one person is the pig that is trying to escape from the farmer. And then one person is the farmer. And so the pig will start in one part of the grid and the farmer will start on one side of the grid. And so maybe all the kids are facing vertically like this way. At any point during the song, the person with the gong can hit the gong. And when they hit the gong, the kids have to all go from facing this way to facing horizontally. And so then the grid has changed horizontally. And if they hit it again, they go back to vertical. And so it's just switching back and forth and their arms are out like this. So it's between this to this to this every time the person hits it. And so that changes the path for the pig and the farmer because sometimes, <coughs> sometimes the gong gets hit and it makes it a lot easier for the farmer to get the pig. And then sometimes it makes it a lot harder. And so it's really fun because you never know when the gate is going to change and the rest of the class is singing the song however many times it takes for the farmer to catch the pig. And then we switch characters out. And of course, everybody gets a turn doing one or the other. But this one is so fun. I will try to link a blog post to this one somewhere because I can't remember where I learned it. But this one is so fun. And we have from New England Dance Masters, one of my favorite ones of all, and that is Sashay the Donut. And I am just going to link a video of a class doing it underneath here because it is just too difficult to explain. But it's basically... At the one point, it's like the kids are sashaying in a circle around each other and they have to break apart from each other fast enough for the people behind them to sashay through them. And so like if they don't, they're going to get bowled over. And I typically will split the class into two smaller groups to do this activity because otherwise like it gets too crazy having like 30 kids in one circle and they're all galloping and sashaying right next to each other and almost knocking each other over because you will inevitably have students that don't pay a lick of attention to what you say and do not split apart even when they're supposed to and they get hit by the next people behind them. But this one's too complicated to explain in this moment. So I will link a video underneath here for you to experience Sashay the Donut. But it is also in one of the New England Dance Masters books and I will link that specific book under this video as well. And then I have three that can be used for all of the classes. And so I'm gonna whiz through those super quick. The first one is Rhythm Four Corners. It's exactly what it sounds like. You put, uh, you have four corners, corner one, two, three, and four. The students have 10 seconds to get into a corner. If they don't make it in time, they have to sit out. You play a rhythm or you show a rhythm on the screen and whichever corner that rhythm was for, uh, like it'll be four rhythms on the screen. You play one of them, whichever corner you play rhythm, that group is out and then you keep playing until it gets narrowed down to one player or however many. And so that is rhythm four corners. It's super fun. It allows them to review and they also love four corners. So it's always a good time. Then we have one that my friend Becca from Becca's Music Room made and that is Asteroid. My kids ask for this all the time. Like even my sixth graders when they move to theater with me and they never remember the name, they're like, can we play space tag that's what they call it and I'm like uh no we're in theater class like we're not in my general music classroom but that shows how much 
they love it still. So this game is very simple. Basically, you put some rhythms on the board, like maybe you say ta, ta, ti, ti, ta, and then they have to walk that through the room in their feet. So they would take one step for ta, two for ti, ti, et cetera, et cetera. And they have a specific dot that they were standing on to start with, which I already have dots in my classroom. So this is pretty easy for me to do. But if you don't have dots in your classroom, you can just put like tape down or paper down or whatever it is. Then at some point, the word asteroid comes up on the screen and they have to race back to their dot. And if they are the last one to get back to their dot, then they have been eliminated by the asteroid. But I also made a rule that if they run into another student because they're not paying attention to where they're going, they are also eliminated because you need to be careful. We don't want people bumping heads and whatnot in this game. This game is very addictive. They will ask for four or five rounds of this game. And if I have a student that I know is very rhythmically inclined and intuitive, I will allow them to just make up patterns on the spot for the kids to follow. And so this one is a hit. I will link to Becca's uh, product here because you will literally play this all the time in your classroom. And then the last one already has a dedicated video to it that came out in February. So go check it out. It is Captain's Coming and it is my rhythm game that I basically made that combines ships and sailors with rhythm patterns. And I'm not going to say much about it here because I have a whole video dedicated to it. So please check it out. But basically, it'll say stuff like captain's coming and the kids have to salute to the captain. When they hear at ease, they let it go. They say a couple of rhythms and then it'll say some motion like four men pointing north. And they have to get in a group of four pointing north to the sky within like five seconds. And when I count down, if they're not in the right number of people, then they are eliminated until there is only one player left. And I know that sounds a little confusing. So like I said, check out the video. You can also check out the product down below, which has a video explaining it as well right there. But that's all I'm going to say on it for this video. And with that, those are all the activities that I have for movement for three through five. I do have many others, but I plan on doing this series more often so that you can get other ideas. Um, and basically any resources that I found through like New England Dance Masters or Game Plan or Rhythmically Moving or whatnot, I will link under here so that you are able to find all of these songs and find all of these folk dances and games because they are a blast to do in your music classroom. And with that, I will catch in with you next week when you see a spring break vlog from me because I am currently on spring break, not as I'm filming this, but at the time this is going out, I'm on spring break as this is being seen. And so I will have all sorts of fun videos for you from my spring break journey. So I will see you in next week's video. Bye.